Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. We're going to make a curved log cabin quilt block today. So if you want to see how to make a block like this, please stay tuned. I have a small confession to make and that confession is that I start a lot of projects and then I just abandon them in the middle. I know that I'm probably not the only person who does this, but um, I have done it from time to time. And so maybe today I'll start making good on some of that. I do, um, my typical pattern is when I start something new, I just do as much as I can with whatever I have and then when I need to go back and get more fabric I can just put this to the side until I go get whatever else I need um, this project was started with leftovers that I had from something um, I don't remember um, but I had honey bun strips oh I know it's probably left over from my uh, busybody quilt um, because I, on that quilt I used um, a honey bun which is a one and a half inch strips and the jelly roll which is a two and a half inch strip so I had the um, outer fabrics already what happened uh, today was I was cleaning out my sewing area because right now my machine is in the kitchen it needs to move back to my sewing area um, but I was going to clean out some things and I cleaned out a basket that had like mail and other things in it and I found all of these things in the um, in the basket I found two completed quilt blocks and then I found um, some squares that I had cut out and then I found the first section of my curved lock cabin and the second section and what I believe happened what probably did happen was that I ran out of the dark gray fabric and so I just sewed whatever I could with the uh, with the rest of the inch and a half fabric and then I just left it to go do another project so I found all of this and um, these actually came from a the um, squares they came from a, oh, a five inch square packet um, this is called Simply Style by Moda and I probably got it from Missouri Star along with some other things and I just saw this on sale and, and got a couple of them. Um, I already cut, um, I cut these into quarters. So I took one of these squares and cut them into four pieces. So they're approximately two and a half inch squares. And this is the one that I started with and probably I may have taken some out of here. I don't even know if it's all 42 but I have the actual pack that you know that the fabrics came from um, so I'm going to work on this I did cut I had to cut a few more so that I could get uh, 64 blocks um, but I want to show you how I do that because I'm actually not going to use these actual strips I'm going to dig into my stash and pull some things out so let's get started before we get into the fabrics, um, I want to go over with you how a log cabin quilt block works. This is my um, log cabin quilt. It's actually a quillow. It can be folded up into a pillow. Um, and I'll put a picture of the, t the whole quilt. But I really want to talk about just how the blocks are constructed. So this is one block what I'm tracing out from the light green, blue, then dark blue, and then white on the bottom. And the way the log cabin works is there is a center square, and then there on one side of that center square is light over here, and then on the other side is dark fabrics. And the way that this quilt has been constructed, all of the um, strips are the same size so all of the lights are one and a half inches and the darks as well are one and a half inches what is interesting about the curve log cabin which I'll put one right here is for my quilt I am using 
um, smaller light strips. So my light strips are going to be one and a half inches. My darker strips are going to be two and a half inches. So even though the construction of a log cabin is exactly the same, we will have different size strips. So when I make my cuts, whenever I'm cutting a lighter fabric, I'm using one and a half inch strips. When I cut the darker fabric, I'm using two and a half inch strips and I have a two and a half inch center square. So let's dig into the scraps and see how we're going to come up with this. I'm going to start with my light fabrics. Um, these squares that have already been completed, they were actually chain stitched, so I stitched them all along this um, white fabric, and I'll show you that when we go to the sewing machine. So I've already cut them apart and pressed them open, pressed them towards the um, the strip, away from the center towards the strip. Um, and so that's where I'm starting. What I've done is I've scoured my stash because my first set is to do these, the individual squares, and so I'm only going to be stitching on one side. I scoured my stash for short pieces that can be um, used to stitch like maybe one square or two squares. And so this is where I'm going to start. I'll be stitching uh, these right sides together with a quarter inch seam and I'm just going to chain stitch over and over and over um, until I have them done. I'm actually going to start with the smaller ones and then I'll uh, eventually move to larger strips. These are strips that have come from my stash that still need to be cut down to an inch and a half. This one hopefully I can get like two inch and a half cuts out of it and then I'll be able to get one cut out of this one. What I also have is a light gray that I have for another project, but I think that, well, my hope is that I won't need to use very much of this. If I can cut, you know, maybe three or four strips off of it, it'll be fine. So we'll start with um, stitching on one side, right sides together, until I can get all of these stitched so that they look like these strips. So I'll do that and I'll show you what it looks like. We're at the ironing board right now and I have chain pieced mini squares right onto one strip of fabric and I'm actually going to press this three ways. I turn it squares facing and press. Just a quick press to set the seam. And then I cut the um, I cut it apart. I'll just do a couple. Like that. And from there, I'll actually turn it over press again and then roll back and press the strip out. Again pressing my seam allowances toward the strip not toward the square. And I'm going to do this for all of these and we'll prepare for the next step. I'm recording Rico. I have all of my first set of strips sewn on. Now I'm going to Add a strip on one side and whichever way you choose to do this it needs to be the same every time so for all of these it looks like I put when I uh, put them right sides together I put the strip on the bottom and then my um, the piece that I added was on the top so when I do these here's my bottom strip it's going to go along on the sewing machine and then this strip will go on top like this and I will add every single one this is a short strip but I will add it to um, each strip until I get all of these done and then we'll press it and go to the next step now that we're on the third set of stitches 
we can go over what I've chosen for my dark fabrics. I actually have, um, these are just some strips that were left over from other projects that I've cut down to two and a half inch strips. These are the, this is the denim that's actually from my grandmother's quilt. And then I have some more pieces that were just extra. You know, I went in my stash and got anything that could be made into um, two and a half inch strips. So this one is from the graduation quilt. And then I have this. This was in um, one of the things that I got from New Orleans. So we're actually from Mississippi in the scrap bag. Um, again, I've cut it down to two and a half inches. And now I'm gonna start um, stitching it to the prepared squares. And I'm gonna put it right sides together and with the last seam that I stitched on top. So this stitch or seam is gonna go on top just like that. And I will stitch those and then we'll see what the next round is. I have the first round finished. So the first round is um, where there is a piece of fabric on each side of the center square. Now for the second round, I'm gonna start with two lights and then finish up with the two darks. So to put, to start it off, I'm going to place this so that the latest fabric I added, the last fabric, which is this dark, is on the top. Okay, and so I'm gonna stitch this side and then this side and I'll and then the darks and then I'll show you that. So at this point you can see that we have two rounds of the light fabric here and then two rounds of the darker fabric here. I just have one more round to add. I'm gonna do another light here and here or no here first and then here and then a dark here and here and that will be the end of the block there's a little bit of cutting that I want to show you before I um, finish the block sometimes when you prepare your block there may be a little bit um, of excess fabric left over here and so then what I'm going to need to do is cut this off to give it a straight edge for my next piece all I'm going to do is take one seam line on my ruler and just I'm going to line it up with this seam line and then just get a, a pretty good, hopefully a good estimate of um, this, uh, this whole edge here. And I'm just going to clip the, um, that excess fabric. So that gives me a nice straight edge when I get ready to attach onto this side. The other kind of cutting that I need to do is when when you first start, you may be able to um, eyeball these cuts, but as the pieces get bigger, um, it'll be a little bit more difficult. So what I'm doing is I'm going to clip the seam. This is actually chain pieced all together. So I'm going to clip this in the middle and I'm going to put my ruler on the seam line here and then clip straight up. And hopefully this will help and I won't have to really square it up after I press it. I won't have to uh, make that side even. I may not have to. Okay, so I'm just lining it up on the seam line and I have the ruler pretty close to the edge of my block. And I'm going to clip there. And then when I press it out, hopefully it'll be a nice straight edge that I can put another light piece along here. So let me get these blocks finished and then I'll show you what it looks like. Here is the finished carved block cabin block. This one has the scrappy look. This is the one that, um, that I've been working on recently. So it has that scrappy look. You can see the darks are scrappy. And even if you look a little closer, you see that the lights are scrappy. I wanna hold up um, one of the first ones with just the solid so you can see the difference. I think these are both going to look great in the quilt. Um, if you have any questions about the curve block cabin, please leave them below. I have about 63 more of these blocks to make uh, before I can lay it out. So I'll finish these up and then we'll do a video laying them out in different um, settings. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!